Hey guys, so I'm going to take a look at Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, the arcade game on Nintendo Entertainment System. It's been quite a while since we last looked at an NES game, so I'm very happy to be looking at this one. I actually, uh, this was a surprise gift at Christmas last year, so, uh, along with another NES game which I will get to. But this is a game that I've, uh, wanted to have for quite some time, because, you know, I, I was a big Turtles fan when I was a kid, and, uh, this is one that I only ever played on emulator, so, playing it on the original NES was actually quite, uh, Quite an experience. The game is certainly... It's not too hard, but it's certainly much more challenging than Turtles in Time. Okay, so on the front cover here, we've of course got the classic TMNT uh, 80s cartoon logo. And uh, they work for two into that pretty well, actually. Then you've got the arcade game, and that is the big thing about this game, is that it was a port of the excellent TMNT arcade game released by Konami. And uh, this is really one of the first, or one of the earliest anyway, um, sort of arcade ports that managed to sort of keep the essence of the arcade game intact when it came to console. You know, this, that was really the big thing. You could actually play a rough equivalent of the, of the TMNT arcade game on your NES at home. So that, that was quite a novel concept. Okay, so we've got some great artwork here showing, of course, Donatello, Raphael, Michelangelo, and uh, Leonardo all skateboarding uh, through a brick wall. Not exactly sure how that works, but anyway. And of course, on one of the bricks, we see Cowabunga! Coupon for free personal pan pizza from Pizza Hut inside. Void in Quebec and Mexico, not sponsored by Nintendo. Oh, there you go. But uh, unfortunately, I do not have the Pizza Hut coupon. I'm not sure how many of those still exist because I'm pretty sure, you know, if you if you put yourself in the shoes of a kid in the late 80s, you're gonna go to Pizza Hut and cash in that free coupon. Oh, pretty much anyone, I think. So obviously, there aren't many of them left. But anyway, licensed by Nintendo for play on the NES, uh, Rev A, so basically just uh, American copy. Official Nintendo seal of quality, of course, and published by Ultra Games. Okay, so on the side we've got the rest of the brick wall and the uh, logo. It all actually it all looks very stylish with the uh, the lines sort of cutting it off in a diagonal way. I do really like this box actually. This has a lot of effort put into it. Okay, so on the back. You may have you may have Shredder double teamed, but he still has you outnumbered. So that was the other thing in this game is that you could play multiplayer, only two player of course, but still that was certainly better than nothing. And uh, for the NES, that was still a bit of a novelty, I'd say. Now obviously you've got games like Double Dragon and whatnot, but uh, anyway. So of course showing off some of the graphics there, and this is actually quite a nice looking NES game. And uh, there is a reasonable amount of enemy variety, a bit too much city, grey city, but uh, on the whole, it's it's got a pretty good amount of variety. Okay. Yo! After being treated like garbage by the Ninja Turtle, Shredder has trained a new, more merciless breed of foot soldiers to inflict his revenge. A clan of over 700 Taekwondo Turtle Terminators have once again captured April O'Neil to use as turtle bait. Fortunately, you don't have to face these freaks of torture alone. For the first time, two dudes or dudettes can join forces and double team Shredder, kicking shell while covering each other's tails. And I'm sure that would definitely help. But to survive, you've got to fight through eight action-packed uh, arcade levels, including Vinny's Valet Stalking Lot and the Soho Sewer System, plus two never-before-seen shell-squashing stages. And that was uh, two new stages that were exclusive to the NES, NES game uh, that weren't in the arcade game. So, uh, and those are honestly some of the most visually interesting stages. You can see down there the snow level and the sort of Japanese uh, fortress level. Okay, so anyway, uh, going inside the box, of course... We have, of course that always never comes out, here we go, the little, uh, I don't know what you'd say, the cover uh, for the cartridge, but uh, as you can see it's pretty much just a really nice reprint of the uh, front of the box, nice little end label there. The Ultra Games logo was certainly very prominent. I'm not sure if that's just how Konami were presenting themselves uh, on the NES or what the deal was with Ultra Games. I actually never really thought to look into it too much. Okay, and then we've got, uh, of course, the uh, the manual. And again, it's just using the same artwork, but it's also kind of, you can see that it's keeping up that sort of diagonal uh, cutoff style, which looks very stylish. So unfortunately, it is actually a black and white manual. Uh, they didn't uh, go for a color one. But, uh, welcome to the world of Ultra. You are now the proud owner of Ultra's authentic version of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the arcade game for the Nintendo Entertainment System. We suggest that you read the following instructions thoroughly before taking on Shredder's ten levels of turtle ripping terror. A lot of fun puns and sort of, uh, plays on words in this. 
But you can see, actually, this is the whole story, uh, this, this page here. And they go into a bit of detail, and frankly, I'm not exactly sure what continuity this is supposed to actually, you know, take place in. Because, <laughs> you can see here, of course, Welcome to the crime-infested boroughs of New York, where one wrong look at the right person can be your last. But the total sleep contentedly, for they made Manhattan a safer place for all. Especially since they've sent the shredder to the local landfill. Or so they think. So, although the turtles tossed Shredder into the metal jaws of a garbage truck, his titanium battle helmet protected his maniacal mind from being mauled. Upon awakening on a sea-bound garbage ship, Shredder vowed vengeance. So, this is kind of a weird thing, is that, uh, yeah, that's of course what happens at the end of the original live-action movie, not in the 80s cartoon. So that kind of implies that this is a sequel to that movie. But it's absolutely not, because it uses all the artwork and style of, and characters from the 80s cartoon, so I'm not really sure what's going on here. But you also get this other great stuff of, um, you know, uh, basically you know, training uh, new foot soldiers and whatnot. But Shredder journeyed throughout the universe via his translocation matrix beam, recruiting the top bounty hunters. He chose two. Tora is a ten-foot, half-ton blizzard beast who in 2,000 years has never known defeat. Journeying from the distant ice planet of Tragladoon... He has come to Earth and needing only one weapon, his devastating claws. His partner in cosmic crime is Shogun, an inhabitant of Sector 6 in the Dead Star Zone, of a mastermind behind the ultimate galactic sword. So yeah, that's, uh... <laughs> I love that they actually go into that kind of detail. They give a backstory here and they kind of explain who you're fighting. So it's it's pretty, pretty fun stuff. And you, you've got all the usual sort of, you know, how to party till you drop, picking your party crusher, how to get a life. <laughs> Stuff like that. They, they do have a lot of fun with this manual, so I, I think this is a lot of fun for a collector. There are over 700 pain-packing party monsters who'd like to use you as the piñata. And of course that is not the you know, enemy variety, that is just the number of enemies that are in the game. Although the enemy variety in this game is actually pretty good, in some ways it's better than Turtles in Time, I would say. The mutant movie stars, of course we've got uh, Leonardo. Leonardo is the head honcho, he enjoys giving splitting headaches with his katana blades. Hmm, that's a bit dark. <laughs> Raphael's weapon of choice is a bad attitude and dual side daggers. Don't tell the brains of the outfit call a computer geek and you'll be eating oak from his bow. Michelangelo, when he's not cracking jokes, he's cracking heads with his mind-numbing nunchucks. <laughs> no, the Turtles agent didn't force him to appear on a sappy game show. This is your select Turtles game screen. Again, a lot of fun with this. It's just they really kind of understood the market for Turtles and it's kind of what people liked about the 80s show. And then we have the screens of a crime. So, of course, this is all the different sort of uh, levels and areas that you go through. To a point, anyway. So, as I say, there is a lot of sort of city areas in the game, but for the most part, the variety is pretty good, especially for an NES game. And they do some very clever things with the color palette to kind of keep interest up. Okay. And then we have enemies of plenty. So we get artwork of pretty much all the major enemies in the game, so... Uh, tubular transport, an overgrown mechanical mosquito equipped with a total zapping laser gun. Uh, stuff like that. Uh, Stone Warrior, of course. Uh, Granitor, I, I don't think uh, Granitor was the, the name of the guy in uh, the 80s cartoon. What was, like, uh, Dreg or something like that, I think it was? Anyway. Uh, uh, we have Frosty the Hitman. Don't let this carrot nose creep fool you. He's packing heat-seeking missiles that have your name on them. Uh, of course, the ever-fun uh, uh, Roadkill Rodney, um, who is also in uh, Turtles in Time. I don't know where that name came from, but I, I do love Roadkill Rodney. That's always been my favourite since I was a kid. Um, except fighting them. I've always hated fighting them. Of course, Mouses and Foot Soldiers. Uh, we have Venom, which is the Scorpion. Blade, which is the guy in the middle. And Vincent Van Growl. That is the Tiger. <laughs> Love that. Vincent, what should we name our tiger enemy? Vincent Van Growl. Perfect. So yeah, Granitor. Uh, that's actually the, uh, the second in command rock soldier from the 80s cartoon, so I'm not sure if maybe he was called Granitor or something. Weird that they'd choose him though. Uh, then we have Professor Baxter Stockman, both in human and fly form. Uh, we have, of course, Krang uh, in his uh, bodysuit. And uh, he fights side by side with Shudder in scene 7. We have Tora and Shogun, who are the new characters designed specifically for the NES game. Uh, we have, of course, Shredder. Again, very 80, like completely 80s design. 
And, uh, of course, the Rocksteady and Bebop. And, uh, you know, Rocksteady isn't too hard in this game, but Bebop... All the bosses, actually, in this game are pretty annoying, to be fair. They have way too much health. Um, okay, treat your Ultra Games cassette carefully. This Ultra Games cassette is a precision-crafted device with complex electronic circuitry. circuitry. Avoid subjecting it to undue shock or extremes in temperature. Never attempt to open or dismantle the cassette. Do not touch the terminal leads or allow them to come into contact with water or the game circuitry will be damaged. That's the usual stuff. And also, always make sure your computer is switched off while, when inserting the cassette or removing it from the computer. But uh, aside from that, we've just got all the usual sort of uh, trademarks and whatnot. Of course, this has got the Eastman and Laird uh, Mirage Studios uh, credits. And, uh, yeah, that's pretty much all it is for this uh, manual compliance of SCC regulations. Very exciting. Uh, uh, do not use with a front or rear projection TV. And uh, just some blank pages for notes. Followed by a pretty basic uh, back of the manual. But it's a lot of fun to read through. I, I really did enjoy this. So I think if you're a total stan, you'll probably get a kick out of that. But that is your look at the TM Mutant Ninja Turtles 2 arcade game on NES. Uh, box and bits. So, uh, you know, it's, it's in my opinion still a very, very fun arcade game. Or sort of like arcade beat-em-up. And uh, I think certainly if you had a friend to kind of go through a whole game with, I think it would be even more fun. But even as a standalone title, I think it's a lot of fun, especially if you are a uh, big Turtles fan, especially for the 80s cartoon. But, you know, if, you, if you're like me and you've played Turtles in time to death, then uh, I think this is definitely a good one to go for. So thank you very much for watching, guys, and I will see you next time.